So with that, guys, I'd like to move into the bread and butter of this final episode, which is the actually the theoretical section on small stack and mid stack play. And before we get there, we'll of course review the big stack ranges to, to give you guys an idea of how different your ranges will be when you're playing a small stack or a mid stack strategy. It's also important, you as a big stack player also need to know the kind of ranges that they're playing and how they play with those different stack sizes. So it's it's both important, you know, if, if you never plan to play um, short stack or mid stack strategies in the cash game environment, it's still it's still useful for you as a big stack player to know better know your opponents. So here we go. The updated ranges for big stack play that I had presented to you guys in the initial videos here in the Storm Poker Challenge looked like this. Um, I won't go into detail on that. Please just check out those videos for a recap. Early position, EP, middle position, cutoff, button, small and big blind. And again, this range expressed as a percentage is here in parentheses. All right, and this was then the cold calling or the flatting range for big stack play suggested by an article in Hold Manager. And again, that was covered in greater detail in previous videos. Just pause the video if you guys like, have a quick look at that, and moving right along. So, small stack play. This is a so-called hit and run strategy where you buy in, as you guys see here, for 20 big blinds and you actually leave the table. If, if you guys aren't familiar with this, it'll be probably quite strange, but uh, it's a very effective strategy as a matter of fact. Uh, you buy in for 20 big blinds at certain sites you can still do so. You leave them when you increase your stack size to 25 and you cap it back off at 15 big blinds if you drop down or you continue on playing the Sklansky, Chebikov, uh, steel push numbers. And yeah, that's that's a whole other topic. We won't get into that. Um, I touched on it a bit in previous videos, but yeah, check those out when you guys get a chance. And what we've got here is basically the open raise size because you're playing such a tight range as you guys see here below. The open raise size when playing a small stack strategy is always four big blinds plus one per limper ahead of you and your three bets are already a direct push. So we were just looking at three bets and four bets as a big stack player and that's you know an enormous over bet in most cases. However when you're playing with 20 and 25 big blinds you know if you if you re-raise pre-flop then it's a shove. And that's how simple it is. This strategy has a lot going for it. One, when you get it in you're often uh, ahead of your opponents. Two, it's one of the only ways that weaker players or newer novice players can actually beat experienced and even some seasoned and very very good players. The reason for that is because even if the big stack player knows that you're a short stack pro, there's not a whole lot he can do to to push you around. <laughs> That's kind of the brilliance of this short stack play and that means if he knows from early position, and again, this is a full ring strategy, by the way, guys. If he knows that you're only raising from early position with jacks of better ace king and folding everything else, the the one advantage he does have is that he can put you on a very exact range. Okay, that is maybe the disadvantage of the small stack strategy that people who understand it they they know exactly what you're playing. However, the <laughs> the flip side of that coin is that. When he knows that you're on Jack's better ace king, um, he knows also that he doesn't have any implied odds because of your small stack size. That means when you're raising it up to four big blinds, and he he can't actually flat you for for set mining, but with uh, mid and small pairs, for example, um, that's yeah not gonna normally happen. So it's just it's a rock yeah rock solid um, strategy for especially for beginning players. And matter of fact, my online mentor, this is the first strategy that he taught me some years ago, actually many years ago. And it was it was pretty impressive to watch him play um, you know, 12, 16 tables at one time. Um, another plus to the strategy, because you don't have to think a lot. It's very simple. You're in early position, you basically raise jacks a better ace king, you fold everything else. If you're in under the gun plus two or something like that, and an early position raiser uh, raises it up, and you know that he's raising actually a bit wider, then you three bet push directly <laughs> versus one open raise before you. 
nothing much to that. Middle position, you're open raising nines are better, ace queen are better, which is a 5% range, even a mid position, full ring. And your three bet shoving uh, versus a bet before you with jacks are better, ace king. Right? Now, from the cut off the button in the small blind, you're raising basically this 8.5% range that we also just looked at a bit in our expected value calculators. And yeah, it looks like that. And from from the later positions, you don't raise four big blinds, but three and a half. And that's when it's folded around to you and you open it up as a steel raise. All right, when you're on the button, then you only raise three big blinds. That's pretty much how that works out. Um, four betting and five betting, when let's say, okay, it's, it's raised in early position, three bet from mid, and it's on you. So you shove only with kings are better in that spot barring any really good reads on your opponents. So that's that's how that looks. And you guys are seeing how how very tight this is and exactly why. It's it's very well suited for a lot of novice and recreational players. Because you're super tight, you're getting it in really, really well. And if you got the patience for it and you can run multiple tables, it's also a pretty lucrative strategy um, for especially full ring tables. The only problem is today most most sites online uh, have a minimum buy-in of, of 30 big blinds, which is also the case here at my bet. Um, three bet re-steal shoving uh, from the small blind or the big blind with tens or better ace king or ace queen, and this can get much wider um, depending on yeah how wide your opponents are are steel raising before you. Uh, so this is adjusted as I put in here greatly with stats on the villain. So calling all in uh, versus most three bets after you open raise with either tens or better or ace queen or better. And yeah, after you make an open raise, somebody comes over the top, you can call all in with this really wide range, this eight and a half percent range here of sevens or better, ace queen or better, king queen. If your stack to the open raise size that you made yourself is less than or equal to um, two and a half to one. So this one little slide is the, sh the small stack strategy in a nutshell. Super effective. Um, if you do, yeah, find online platforms that still allow you to buy in for a 20 and leave it 25. The reason I'm showing this to you guys now is because you can actually play these numbers also in the six max environment. Of course you can. I would just say because you're going to be posting the blinds uh, much more frequently and even more frequently a bit at the uh, storm tables that you should widen this up somewhat but if you guys want to just check this out you know that's why I'm showing it to you play it a bit um, see how you do check your numbers maybe hold a manager and yeah uh, if it works out for you then definitely definitely go for it and you might find that in the six max environment of course you can yeah, you can widen this out quite a bit so the mid stack strategy what is that well it's a combination of the big stack strategy that we covered in the past more or less six episodes and the small stack strategy that I just showed you in the last slide. And the difference is you buy in either for 30 to 40 big ones, right? Uh, a lot of sites, the minimum is like 35. Um, the storm tables that you guys have seen is it's at 30. And so what we'll do is definitely buy in for the 30 and yeah, play at least one session like that so you guys can, can see, get a taste for how that actually works out. So the idea is, yeah, buying in for the minimum at 30 or 40 big blinds and then leaving the table whenever you get over 50. All right, if you drop down, let's say you buy in for the 30 and you drop down a couple big blinds um, down to 20, then you can tighten up and play the short stack strategy. <laughs> or you can cap it back off to 30 or 40 or whatever, you know, whatever your, your standard buy-in is there. The other thing you can do is when you, let's say you double up, you buy in for 30, you double, you're at 60. Instead of leaving the table, then you can continue on and maybe widen up a bit. So that's why I've coined the strategy, the hybrid strategy. Whereas, yeah, you might see online uh, people referring to it as a mid-stack strategy, which of course it is. But I think the, the term hybrid gives you, yeah, more of a more of a feeling for what's actually meant, right? It's a it's a very fluid strategy, and I wouldn't, um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it necessarily. Um, and yeah, unless you have a pretty strong foundation in both big stack and small stack play. Another thing you can do is when you, let's say you're playing for the first time or you're maybe a bit uncomfortable in, in live casinos or underground card rooms, 
or <laughs> on the chit card rooms. Um, and yeah, you want to kind of test the waters, get your feet wet, and check that out. This mid stack strategy is a really good way to do that. That means, let's say you sit down at a at a NL uh, NL one thousand table, no limit thousand. That would be uh, five dollars for the small, ten dollars for the big. And you're thinking, yeah, shit, I don't want to put a full grand on the table here. And you can just buy in for three hundred. Right? You're playing, you're playing basically exactly the strategy. You check it out. If you do well, then you just play on, kind of ex you know ex expand your expand your range into the big stack strategy. And yeah, if you don't, then you've minimized your losses. So this is also good, yeah, good kind of interim strategy uh, for playing in live environments if you're yeah if you're a bit uncomfortable and you want to kind of test the waters. So what we've got here, guys, is the general recommendations for no limit full ring mid stack strategy or hybrid strategy starting hands. And as always, here I've got adjust for the six max storm environment. What most people do is they their open race size is OR is between three and four big blinds, plus one per limper. Their three bet size is either two and a half to three times the previous bet, plus one per cold caller. And a four bet or a five bet is here definitely a direct push. So again, going back to the YouTube comment there and the analysis we just looked at, again, four bets when big stacked don't necessarily have to be a push. Four bets when you are mid-stacked or short-stacked are necessarily a push. So keep that in mind. General ranges as we have here. Um, early position, this is again recommended for you know seven or more players at the table. Um, tens are better ace-queen. And again, this is very tight, guys. This can be widened up, even, even with the mid-stack strategy, but in general. Tens are better ace-queen uh, for right under 5%. And your three betting or calling all in when somebody comes over the top with queens are better. You're going to open four bet only with kings are better, uh, as is the case with the short stack strategy. So for middle position, we're going to look at a range here of sevens are better, ace jack suited are better, ace queen are better, uh, any is all suited and suited, and king queen suited. That is 6.6 percent, and this would this would also be a pretty typical. 7% uh, three betting range that you guys can plug into poker stuff again to see how your four bets will will look you know, going back to the comment on YouTube again uh, versus that entire range when he never folds and all right just to follow up why not it's fun we've got 6.6% let's see what they default eights are better ace 10 yeah it's relatively close and with the offsuited ace king you're flipping and very precisely with sevens, ace jack suited, and the king queen suited we had. And there we go for exactly 6.6%. And you check that out, and it's more or less the same. All right, so you're flipping against that entire range. But again, guys, that's why you're not just looking at these ranges when you shove, right? Because fold equity is on your side, and your opponents are going to be folding, by and large, uh, Pretty decent percentage of that entire range. Again, yeah. Uh, if you guys missed that last video, definitely, definitely check that out. Uh, fold equity and expected value. All right, from the cutoff. Um, forgive me, middle position. That's going to be an open raise here at just under seven percent. Three betting tens are better. Ace queen. It's very standard. Uh, and you're going to shovel in with queens are better. Ace king very often. All right, cutoff. Fives are better. Ace nine suited. Ace ten all for better. King Jack suited or better, and King Queen for an 11 percenter. And we're going to be three betting here at nines or better. Ace Jack suited, Ace Queen plus. All right, and again, all in versus a four bet behind with Jack's a better Ace King. So you guys can plug in this 5.4 percent range. We know now that this is a three percent range, so we're folding yeah, just under just under half of that entire range, more or less, right? As the guesstimation would be your fold equity. All right, so button small blind, uh, any pair at this point, a7 suited, a 9 0 and your broadways all the way up for about 16%. And again, your steel raise sizes should be about two and a half to three big blinds, right? A little bit smaller because you're, you're open raising a bit wider. So that's the principle, guys. The tighter you're raising, in general, the higher you want your open raise size to be. And the wider you're raising, the smaller you want that to be in general. That also means when you have aces here, which is included in this range, 
from the button or the small blind and you know adhering to this whatever whatever big blind open raise standard that you set for yourself just adhere to that even when you have aces so that you're not readable all right three bet resteals that means it's folded around to a late position raiser he or she raises it up you're going to three bet resteal in the blinds with again this eight and a half percent range and calling all in <laughs> we'll look at that here in the calculator in just a sec uh, when they four bet shove over the top, and yeah, we'll get in that in just a moment. All right, if, yeah, more or less five percent. Uh, three bet resteal push up to thirty big blinds with tens or better ace queen, and that means it's folded around to the late positions. The guy raises it up, and he's probably going to be raising it up on a, a range even wider than this. And you, as a mid stack player, short stack, sh uh, short stack player, shove that all in all day long with this stack size with tens of better ace queen in most scenarios right most most cases most playing environments all right i put here a note that the three bet shoves and resteal ranges should vary with stats on your villain and that's yeah that's something we'll look at here again in the calculator that i put together just for mid stack play so briefly to the pros and cons we've got on the pro side that you can play at a higher limit with the same bankroll that means that Let's say you have the, the US 1000 as your total bankroll as we had earlier. And you can now play at NL50, even NL100 probably, with the mid stack strategy because you're buying in for only 30 big blinds instead of 100. All right? and the reason that's a good thing is that you can clear your bonuses faster and you can collect more so called frequent player points. Or you can also, if you're on a rate back program, you can also get a higher rate back. And that means, yeah, you're playing at a higher level um, for more or less the same amount of risk. And yeah, you're playing a tighter strategy, and it's, it's really effective, I think, especially in the yeah, storm poker environment at my bet. So with your tighter range, your post-flop decisions are a lot easier in general. This is also a simplified strategy that means that if you're relatively new to the game, this is also one you can incorporate, right? Um, playing tighter. Um, yeah, raising smaller, getting it in good is definitely a, a great way to approach the game, especially when you're just getting started. All right, and this is again a strategy for beginners to beat more experienced players and a great way to get experience. And here's a big point, guys, for mid and late phase tournament play. That means if you're relatively new to the game or you're just starting with tournaments, then yeah, you're not going to see a lot of late phases in the beginning of your multi table tournament career. And the way that you can practice that, kind of get used to the ranges, get used to re-steal shoves, um, yeah, stuff that, that may be a bit scary for, for beginning and novice players or rec players, this is a really good way to get a lot of experience in a very short amount of time for those mid and late phases in your upcoming tournaments. It's a good way to practice. All right, the cons. Given the small number of big ones, you're going to be all in much more than you will be when you're playing a hundred big blind stack. That means that yeah, the old saying "easy come, easy go" is when you're playing a mid stack and short stack strategy, much easier come, much easier go. So again, I put here in green, mind your stop loss when you're playing a mid stack strategy. Go ahead and go ahead and stop the session if you lose more than four four stacks. I would say in general, uh, maybe five. You know, because, yeah, that's only going to be, what, a um, stack and a half as a big stack player. But if you've already dropped five stacks, um, you're probably you're probably approaching tilt uh, relatively quickly. And it's good to just go ahead and pull the chute and, yeah, get a cup of coffee, come back when the nerves are settled, and kick it back off. All right, and the final con here I've got is that your fold equity, okay, yet again fold equity, is going to be a bit smaller. And well, actually, quite a bit smaller than when you're playing a big stack strategy. So, in general, the principle is that the bigger your bet, often enough, the the more your opponents will fold. So when you're yeah, when you're shoving for only 30 big blinds, you're not going to have the same amount. The guys aren't going to lay down the same amount of hands as when you're shoving for 100 big blinds, for example. In general, in general. All right, and the potential profit when you do actually catch your monsters pre or post flop that's also going to be reduced by your effective stack size. So this is the list that I put together for the 
hybrid strategy at the Storm Poker Table, six max environment. And it is as follows. Basically, yeah, we'll be continuing on our, our low and mid stakes cash games and playing NL50 at this point with, yes, our minimum buy in of 30 big blinds and then cashing out when we get over 50 and topping back off when we get down to 15 or fewer. That in the NL50 environment is going to be 15 bucks for 30 big blinds as our buy in. If we drop down to half of that, then we'll cap back up and then we will leave if we get above 25. That's a general play and it's really neat on, as you guys will see here shortly enough, on the, or at the Storm Poker tables that you can immediately, once you, once you double up, click out of that table and jump back in for a brand new fresh 30 and, and kick it back off. Now the hybrid strategy is, again, it's a fluid, it's a fluid strategy. So you can play it really, really tight, basically, even also in the six max environment, um, playing short stack strategy ranges, why not? Check it out, see how you do. The only thing is when you are playing those tight ranges, you will be posting the blinds much more in the six max environment than you will in the full ring. And even a bit more probably here in the storm, storm environment. So yeah, again, you just have to check that out. Uh, you can also play the ranges that I just showed you guys for typical, actually tight, um, tighter, yeah, tighter mid stack play in the full ring environment. And you can also just run with this list that I've got here for us. And I think what we'll do is in the, in the real time session, I'll go ahead and adhere to this list as well as I can. And yeah, we may even may even begin by playing the short stack strategy, the typical short stack strategy at the uh, six max tables, just to see how we do, and then widen it up to something like this. So, what I've got is early position open raising up to three big blinds, and we're going to be open raising nines a better ace queen. Range expresses a percentage at just at five point one. All right, we will four bet and five bet versus somebody coming over the top behind us with kings are better. All right, middle position open raising for us will then be this again the six seven percenter, and we will three bet an early position raiser, with jacks a better ace king, and depending on our stack size, it's either going to be a three bet push, or just a typical three x raise. Now, from the cutoff, we will open with fives a better ace nine suited ace ten da 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 da, da for about twelve percent, and here with the hybrid strategy. You can over flat. You can over limp. You can over flat from time to time. When you've got the small mid pockets, again, remember the 9x rule. And when you've got your suited connectors or your suited ace x, suited baby aces, then remember the 15, 20, 25x rule. And always adhere to that um, concerning the implied odds. So when you're playing a small stack strategy for only 20 big blinds or 25, there is no flatting. Calling is absolutely forbidden. As you get deeper, as you get into mid-stack and hybrid play, you can start incorporating again, set mining, uh, positional flats, stuff like that. Just make sure that you're always mindful of the effective stack size at your table for the implied odds here. So from the cutoff, we'll be three betting two and a half to three times. Uh, the previous race size with nines are better, ace-jack suited, uh, ace-queen, if you have stats, you can get much wider or much tighter. And yeah, you can also find flats here, maybe with nines. Um, yeah, the, the lower end of this of this range. All right, and we're gonna be shoving all in versus a four bet with jacks better and ace king. Four betting and five betting, all or nothing versus a 30 big blind open raise, or only with kings or better. So that means, let's say EP open raises, right, he makes a two bet, there's a three bet here from middle position, the cutoff four bets, and you're sitting there with your ace queen offsuit and thinking, hmm, what should I do? The answer is fold. <laughs> All right, the answer is fold, and especially when you're playing here this this uh, small stack strategy or mid stack strategy. So again, we'll we'll be shoving over the top in that scenario with kings are better. Good. Button open raising is getting really wide here at 20 percent, 21. And the small blind um, can be tightened back up a, a bit, you know, for the positional disadvantage post flop. 
down to 17. It can even be much tighter than that. Again, guys, with statistics, you can really change this up. But as a general rule, I think this is more or less what we're looking like. And we will 4-bet push, right, with 10s or better ace queen. All right, from the small. Now, when we 3-bet resteal, we're going to be looking, again, at our 8.5 range. And 3-bet squeezes as a push is just really lucrative in a lot of cases when you're playing the hybrid strategy here, and that's going to be 10s or better ace queen. So you guys remember squeezing, 3-betting, steal scenarios, all that kind of stuff from the initial videos. And if you don't, definitely check that out because, yeah, it's not the purpose of this video. Um, we've covered all that before. Yeah, rewind the tape a bit. Uh, check out the My Bad channel at uh, YouTube. And, yeah, definitely definitely have a look at those. All right, so after you resteal, we're going to be calling a 4-bet all-in with Jack's a better ace-king up to 30 big blinds as an effective stack. And again, this 4-bet, we may widen up as a call in steel scenarios. And to show you guys why that would be, we'll jump back into our equity calculator. Again, this is Dylan. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely hope it was useful for your games. Till then, on behalf of the entire team here, all the best, and best of luck at the tables.